Hello everyone, it is Danielle Iwata here with a brand ambassador video for Say ABC. And I wanted to make this video to talk about student management tips in your Say ABC classroom. How to work with them and how to overcome any problems that you might come across in the classroom. All right, so let's get started. At the beginning of every Say ABC class, you have the class rules. Rule number one, speak in English. Rule number two, wear headphones. And rule number three, listen to the teacher. Many of the time, they're not wearing their headphones, but it's okay because in the classroom, you can mute them or you can specifically choose a student's microphone. So keep that in mind as your objective as a teacher. Let's talk about engagement in the classroom. Although the class is in a group setting, make sure that you're giving them individual attention. Use the drag and drop feature to drag them on the screen. That gives them full mic and mouse control and it gives them a turn to participate. Encourage them to raise your hand. Who knows the answer? Can you raise your hand? And they love doing that. And that gets them going. It's physically raising your hand. Okay, she's gonna pick me. And that gets the student to be engaged. And always as a teacher, Think about the parents looking in. They would feel really good to see their little child raising their hand, getting excited about English, and that is a good marketing strategy for you as a teacher. Now, let's talk about some problems that might occur. What happens if you have a student who you don't know how to say their name? They only have a Chinese name and you don't have any clue how to do it. One, ask them to repeat. What is your name? Ask them to repeat. After two times, if you don't get it, just leave it. Why? Because it might actually make the student uncomfortable. Wait, what? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? You can actually drag the student up onto the screen so that lets them know it's their turn to participate. So even if you're not sure what their name is, you can still engage them in the activity. If you have mom or dad nearby, say, where's mama? Can you call mommy? I had a student, his name was X-I-X-I, -X -I, and I didn't know, so I said, hey, mom, is she, can she come? And mom came, and I said, what is your son's name? And she got it, she said, Ricky, Ricky. Oh, okay, great. So a lot of times the parents can help you out if they're nearby. If they're not, just move on and try to ensure that they participate in the class. All right, so let's move on to another type of student. Not so fun, disruptive students. Some are being bad, but some are just having a bad day. So as a teacher, use your discernment. Do you think they are being disrespectful to you? Or are they having a bad day? Remember, most of these lessons are held after school in the evening. So they've come from a whole day of school to now sit down and do their English lesson. They might have had a bad day at school. Put yourself in their place. Even though it might feel like a personal insult to you, you can learn to take it with a grain of salt and effectively manage that tricky situation. I had a little girl in one of my homerooms. She's usually a great student. The minute she came to the class, she is having a screamo crying fit. I tried everything. I tried making a funny face. I tried bringing my monkey out. I tried every stop and I couldn't get it. But I noticed her nails were painted. So I said, Jenny, wow, look at your nails. They're so beautiful. Can you show me? And that worked. Of all the things, that's what worked. And now I'm not saying that that's always gonna work, but as a teacher, I realized that maybe she's not being bad on purpose. She seemed like she's having a really bad day. So just try to put yourself in their position and try to show some kind of compassion, show an interest in them. However, sometimes there are students who are just being bad and they're being disrespectful and that is not acceptable in the classroom. Remember the rule number three, listen to the teacher. What I have found is that the more I react to a rude, disrespectful student, the more they act out. So it backfires on me. You have that student there, they're being disrespectful, they're being rude on purpose. I will check in with them periodically, but if they are not responding or if they're disrupting the class, 
thank God Say ABC has that mute function, you can put them on mute and I ignore that behavior. Usually they're just trying to get a reaction out of the teacher or from their classmates and if no one's paying attention to them, they usually calm down. I ignore a disrespectful student, I check in with them periodically and I try not to let their behavior ruin the other experience for the other students. But when they do a good job, be sure to commend them. It's a positive reinforce to them that, oh, okay, teacher gave me a reward card or teacher gave me a high five. I think I'm gonna keep doing that. A trick I've learned, you can pretend to call your mom. You can get your cell phone out and say, should I call your mommy? You're not doing a good job. I'm going to call your mommy. You freak out, no, don't call mom. Please don't call mom. And they snap right to it. <laughs> you can send a message to the fireman saying, you know, the student is not focusing or they're being rude. Can you please call their mother? And they can get in contact with the parents. Also talking about rude students, you have scribblers in the class. So it's called a privilege. You can turn on and off the mouse privilege for those students. If they're not showing responsible use of their mouse, you can take off that mouse privilege. And again, they're usually looking to get a reaction out of you. So who's the teacher here? Who's the teacher? <laughs> or the teacher, okay? We're in charge, don't forget that. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to another kind of student distracted students. They're just not having it. They're not paying attention in the lesson. Try to like take a look at their surroundings or even their t-shirt or what they're wearing and you try to get them to talk about that. If they have a toy in their hand or something they're playing with, can I see that? Wow, okay, cool. Don't just ignore what they're doing. Show an interest in them. I have one student who likes to play the guitar for me. So we have to do this lesson now, but if you do a good job at the end of class, you get to play for teacher a guitar song and that gets some um, engaged in the lesson. Okay, it's a reward for me at the end. Try to find out what they love and then try to involve that in the lesson. Think about it from their point of view. A teacher who truly is compassionate and shows an interest in them, they're more likely to want to pay attention to you than some cold kind of drill sergeant who just wants to get through the lesson. If they are not paying attention, get your puppet out. Hi, hey, Tommy! And that will, what, what, what? That gets their attention. They've been in school all day. They're coming home now to this lesson with their teacher. It's a lot. So get your funny voice out. Use your props if you have props like a microphone or funny sunglasses or a nose. Get that out. Use your body, make funny voices. All of it, it counts. That will get them engaged in the lesson. You have to bring some kind of passion to the lesson. For the younger ones, I make them dance. Dance, dance, jump, jump. Yes, run, run. Whoa. <laughs> now let's talk about distracted students who are distracted because they are older. Slapstick humor will not work with them. Make it more interesting for them. A lot of times for older students, they're bored. They've already been doing this since they've been a little child. Go off script with your older students. If they are reading, they already know the lesson. Okay, so ask them, so how do you feel about that? Or do you like this season? Do you like fall? What do you like to do in fall? Do the leaves change color in fall? <laughs> Sometimes they're giving the same rote answer and you say, hey, no, that wasn't my question. They're, uh, what? Go off script with them. Ask them things that are not on the PowerPoint slide. Extend, extend, extend. Okay, I get that you get it, but let's talk about this some more. That will help them engage further in the lesson. Okay, let's talk about another class of student. Shy students, it happens a lot. Use their name. Speak slowly, big, warm smile, and wait. And wait. Be patient with them. Don't expect the answer right away. What's your name? Their brain is processing, 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 and even then they might not even say their name. But think about this. I get nervous when I have to just say a Chinese name. I butcher it. I hate saying the name in Chinese. So imagine how it feels for these children to be in a class where it's all English. It must be terrifying for them. So be patient with them and celebrate the small victories. If you get them to puppet and just repeat what you're saying, yay, good job. Celebrate the small victories. That will positively reinforce in them that it's okay to just speak to try something. And if you celebrate those little victories, their confidence 
will continue to increase. Speak in English. <laughs> If you get them to speak in English, you have won. And let's go on to our last kind of student, our, your talkative students. If you have a talkative student, but they are speaking in English, that is a win. So as a teacher, you tread a delicate line. You don't want to shut them down. Be quiet. Don't, don't, don't talk. Because that will reinforce in them, oh, okay, don't talk. Let them talk, but you have to ensure that you give each student equal time. So for a student who's talkative and he will talk for five minutes straight, give them a limit of time to let them participate, but within a certain limit. And of course, for those talkative students, be sure that you're still listening for error correction. You're still their English teacher. Remember, their parents are still looking on and still expect that you correct their grammatical mistakes. So overall, guys, the vibe of this whole video, I keep going back to compassion. Be a compassionate teacher. Put yourself in their shoes. Make it a good overall experience for the student. Remember, back to the basic rules. If you can, for the most part of your class, accomplish this, you've done a great job. Really focus on making sure the student has the best overall experience. Make them feel good about English and excited about taking classes with Say ABC. That feeling that you can give them as a child will stay with them throughout their childhood as they grow and throughout their journey. I would like to end with one of my favorite quotes by Maya Angelou, where she says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So make your students feel good about themselves, make them feel confident in their English, and do your best job as a teacher managing students, and Happy teaching, you guys. I hope this video has been helpful. Feel free to reach me. My contact information is below. Bye-bye.